I'm Hana, and this is PBS Reno STEM Works, the show where we explore careers in science, technology, engineering, and math, and what makes them so much fun. We take you inside businesses and talk to professionals in their field and explore what they do. Today, we are going to visit with our friends at the Desert Research Institute to find out what they do. PBS Reno STEM Works is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute. Have you ever flown or seen someone flying a drone? Wouldn't it be awesome if you could fly one yourself for fun? Or maybe even get paid to fly one for a job? At DRI, they do this all the time for all kinds of research and sometimes just for fun. Believe it or not, they use drones for archaeological purposes. They also use drones to help study and fight forest fires. DRI does a ton of other cool research as well. Everything from helping fight climate change, keeping our waterways clean, helping grow food in poor countries, and many other awesome things to help make the world a better place. With today's visit to DRI, we'll get to chat with archaeologist turned drone pilot Megan Stuby and Tatiana Menikal. We'll also meet Adam Watts, who's a professor of fire ecology and flies drones into wildfires. So come on. Let's go discover together and find out what it is that they do and why they choose to use drones in such surprising ways. All right, ready for takeoff? So tell us, what is it that you do at DRI? I basically create predictive models of where to find rock art out in the desert and then I go test my theories. As an archaeologist, I'm interested in the past. So I record and collect data to understand people's history. I get to go out in the field. That means for me going to visit forests uh, and answer ecological questions about how trees work, how fires work, and sometimes I even get to fly my drones over forest fires. I go out trying to find places where somebody might have painted rock art onto maybe a boulder or into a rock shelter, some sort of overhang. So I spend a lot of time in the field and collect data that is measurable that we can take into the office later and use that in understanding archaeological sites. So, how do you use drones to do your job? For instance, we have a project that we are looking to preserve an uh, archaeological site in southern Nevada. It's on this terrace that's being affected and being eroded by monsoon rains every summer. So we are going out every few months, deploying that drone, and we set up a mission so it flies across the entire site. And then we have a looking down image of that entire site and the landform that it's on. So then we can go back into the office and we can compare what that landform and any site features in the site look like versus how they looked several months ago. When we find rock art, we use the drones to create 3D models of the surfaces that the rock art was created on. And a lot of times with that, you create lots of pictures and you can use those pictures to create giant photographs that we can run through different programs to help us find rock art that might have been lost to the visible spectrum or you can't actually see it, but it's still there. It basically stretches the color spectrum and makes rock art that has been faded from time much more visible. So we can then record things that people haven't seen in hundreds of years that might have faded from the sun or from wind exposure or rain exposure. A camera is, is our typical sensor on these small aircraft. We also have much bigger aircraft and we can put sampling devices on those that actually go into the smoke and capture little samples of the smoke, bring them back and we can analyze those in the lab. And if it's the right kind of camera, it can tell us things like the temperature of the flames and we can see how fast the fire is moving and that allows us to predict for firefighters where they need to be later today or tomorrow in order to, to put their hoses and equipment where it needs to be to fight the fire. This is what's called a thermal infrared image. So this just shows the heat and the temperature and it represents it as a video image. What's going on is we have somebody on a four-wheeler who's lit another fire because this is a prescribed fire that we intended to create and you can see the flames here starting to grow. This is just one example of what we can get with these thermal infrared cameras on these unmanned platforms. Why is your job at DRI important? I always ask myself, what am I doing that can help other people? What am I doing that can help other species? And what am I doing that can help the planet and our future? Working with forest fires to enable us to better understand them, better fight them when we need to, and feel like that helps all of us. Archaeology is important for a number of reasons, mainly because 
In order to figure out where we're going, we have to know where we've come from. And figuring out the past and how people lived here in this particular climate versus another particular climate. We need to know about the past so we can understand human beings and we can understand how they are adapting across the world. Conservation and preservation are key aspects of archaeology as a whole. We want to make sure that we're not ruining places that other people have found to be their home. We want this to be here 400 years in the future so that people can see these things and continue to see these things. What's the most exciting part of your job? You know, one of the things that really excites me about my job is that it's varied. So personally, I don't feel like I could do the same thing every day, all day, for my whole life. That would just be too boring. Being able to go places that most people don't think about going, being able to see things that most people don't ever get to see, being a person to see something for the first time in 200 years, 400 years, 1,000 years is really incredible. Occasionally you can just get artifacts that you know are thousands of years old and they're just laying directly on the surface. So it's interesting to see that. There are a lot of days, like when I'm working, that I don't really feel like I've grown up. Look at what I get to do. I get to fly robots over forest fires. What are some of the most important skills in your job? Being able to actually have some hands-on technological skill, that includes uh, both working with these unmanned aircraft and also being able to be a pretty good drone pilot. An ability to do good research, you have to develop those research skills. So you have to be able to think critically, you have to work methodically. You have to be creative in order to come up with research questions. And obviously problem solving is the way that you get the answers to your questions. You have to always be willing to change your plan and always be willing to adjust as necessary. The most important thing I've learned is not to get frustrated at a problem, but to break it down into parts that allow me to see it clearly and address each part of the problem so that I can get on to the next part of the problem and eventually do what I want to do. There's always going to be a little bit of failure when you're in a scientific field. So being prepared to have to keep going and try again and try again until you, you get what you're looking for. You take these airplanes, for example, a lot of times you take them out of the box and it's unclear how they work. So you have to go online, the instruction manuals aren't very good, or maybe you break something and you have to figure out how to fix it. It requires a lot of special thinking, a lot of critical thinking, and honestly, it's just a lot of fun um, coming up with your own questions and then figuring out your own answers. Working in teams together is also a huge part of turning failure into success. When you're out with people, it could be extreme temperatures, it could be hot, it could be rugged. You get a lot of different personalities. So you have to find a way to wrangle all those things together, keep everyone happy, and ensure the work is still getting done. Do you have any advice for us? Find uh, a friend who has one of these drones and maybe see if you can go out and use it to, uh, to count the number of trees or, or see if you can make some observations of birds from above. You never know what you might find when you have this new perspective. You have a wide open world and you have plenty of opportunity. And it doesn't really matter what your background is. You can, if you want to do something, you can probably make it happen. Explore all of your options. Um, there's so many different kinds of things that you can do with your career. Don't necessarily get stuck in choosing one thing because you happen to be good at it. Maybe what you want to do is something you're not good at, but it's fun for you. Keep doing the things that keep making you feel like you're still a kid. And don't worry too much about the future because as long as you're enjoying doing something interesting that's useful, there will be a place for you and people will be happy to have you doing that work. Give it one more try. If you're trying to run a mile, do one more lap. If you're trying to read a chapter, read one more page. Everything you're trying to do, give it one more shot because one more shot might be all it takes to figure out that you can do anything. Just worry about doing something that is interesting and useful and that experience will lead you to something else that's interesting and useful. Pay attention to what you love. That's absolutely the way that you find your career. It could be digging in the dirt. It could be messing around in the lab. It could be taking care of your friend's cuts and bruises that leads you to be a doctor or a nurse. Be curious. Take those things you learn in school and look for opportunities to do something interesting with them. Keep your brain turned on because something that's out there will be amazing and you have no idea what it is right now. Just listen to your passions and they can absolutely guide you to your future. Don't say you can't do it. Don't say I don't want to try it. Try it once. If you don't like it, then at least you know that you don't like it. But everything deserves a shot. Try everything. You keep doing something enough, 
you get used to it, you get better at it. So it's just one of those things that something seems really intimidating in the moment, but in the end, you get better with it. There's a whole wide world out there full of things that haven't been explored, places that people haven't been in hundreds of years, and maybe you'll be the one to find something cool there. Wow, I don't know about you, but I found that super exciting. Thanks to Megan, Tatiana, and Adam, we found out a lot about how drones can play a part in so many cool things, from fighting fires to archaeology and so much more. Well, that's about all the time we have. But I want to thank you all for joining us for this episode of PBS Reno STEM Works. You can find out more information about the Desert Research Institute at their website, dri.edu. For more information on these careers and others, visit pbsreno.org slash STEM Works. And as always, don't forget to get out there and discover what it is that gets you going and on the right path to your STEM future. PBS Reno STEM Works is brought to you in part by the Desert Research Institute.